this video will talk about the Radha Swami cult. What exactly this cult is, what it stands for, what its mission is, and the entire propaganda surrounding this cult and the leader of this cult and how it was formed and why it was formed. First and foremost, there are multiple cults like the Radha Swami all over Punjab and in extension to that all over India. What these cults preach primarily is not a any brand of uh, particular ideology. What they mainly preach is a state worship or in other words they are preaching a brand of Indian nationalism. A brand of Indian nationalism which is very close and has been in bed with the right wing Hindu fascist of India, primarily being the Sangh Parivar. Uh, throughout the Indian Union, there are many such cults. Radha Swami cult is one of the major and one of the largest cults within Indian Union entirely. It boasts of having around uh, follows in the millions, 10, maybe 20, something of that nature. Now, as far as their claims of a religious ideology or any particular philosophical attributes to their ideology, there are none. They merely preach Indian nationalism. Their core ideology is surrounding the concept of Indian nationalism. And more to it, these are the new age cults which you can find all around the world which are, have a singular aim and that of preaching a particular state worship, worship the state instead of enlightening people and making people self-aware and making people aware of a creator and learning importance of what society and the human civilization or the human condition in general these cults concentrate around the idea of worshipping a state. Whatever a state is, regardless what happens within the state, you will worship the state, no matter what, who is in control of that state. And as far as uh, Radha Swami is concerned, they fit this model absolutely. From the day it was formed till today, the format has been the same. They worship Indian nationalism, they stand for Indian nationalism, they preach Indian nationalism, and their brand of Indian nationalism is Hindutva. It's always been Hindutva. Indian nationalism is Hindu nationalism. Let's be, there be no doubt as to what these people preach. They preach, they preach a variant of state worship, that is absolute Hindutva and that is Hindu fascism. There is no doubt. As far as the legitimate, uh, as far as their claims of having millions of followers, these claims are somewhat exaggerated because uh, in Punjab alone, we have, we have thousands of small cults uh, attached to every single village and town. But more to it, there are five or six larger cults in Punjab. 
so, and each of those cults are claiming millions of followers. So if you do five times, say, six times five, that would be 30, 30 million plus, uh, you get into the range which is bigger than the population of Punjab. So therefore their claims are not as credible as they claim they are. As far as the organization structure, it is one of the largest cults within India. And the reason they are so big is because the financial structure behind them. Because the state of Punjab, Haryana, Himachal, Rajasthan, the, these parts of the Sikh Empire, they have fallen under the yoke of the Aryan Hill Kings. And their dynasties have been running that region for X generations. Only the Sikh Empire overthrew them, but they have, through deception, come back and they are in control one uh, again and preaching their ide ideology of same Aryan supreme race, Hindu fascist, caste, worship, fascism, all over again. And this is this cult is mere an extension to that nonsense. And as far as their cult leader is concerned, Mr. Dillon, whatever his name is, because he seemed to have multiple names. And as for his past in Europe is concerned, he seemed to have multiple personalities as well. From cross-dressing to transgender to engaging with all kind of weird sexual experiences and multiple drugs. This is the history of this cult leader. And it seems like it has taken its toll. Mr. Dillon, Mr. Dillo, has been in hospital multiple times. He has a reoccurring jaw problem. His jaw has been removed, but it seemed to be, uh, problems seem to be uh, reoccurring again and again. His cult and his followers are saying it's a disease which is uh, closely related to some sort of a cancer. But if you look at what he's been treated for, and if you read the symptoms he's suffering from, there is only one disease which matches the profile, and that's AIDS. And as for his sexuality and his entire past has been concerned, a person who's been mingling around, cross-dressing, having gay orgies, drugs, and all stuff in his youth in Europe. This is not a, a surprising fact. And now him becoming a cult leader, a cult leader with a substantial following, that's like, uh, that's like a child brothel on steroids. And this is the reality of this cult. Now, the facts are, that it is it is a proven fact that uh, in that region, child prostitution has been there and it continued. It had continued under the brand of Bachabazi in that region. And with these cults, they have merely extended it. Because with the backing of the state, they have engaged themselves on all the most unimaginable practices you can ever imagine. We have had instances where in Punjab, outside Radha Swami Deras, we have seen bodies of young kids being formed, found. We have seen body parts of uh, young kids being found. We have seen, uh, we have seen uh, police Officers claiming that there has been uh, child sacrifice and then the case is being covered up. Then we have more dead bodies being found. Then the case is being covered up. This is the history of this data. This data has been forcefully taken over poor people's land, their houses, converting them into 
their new and brand new deras, taking over their land, taking over their businesses, village after village, changing the shape of the river, changing. They are taking over natural resources and turning and changing as they please. In a country which claims to be a democracy. A village after village, they've been taken over, buying them forcefully. Not even buying them, they're just pushing people out and nobody says anything. The biggest problem we got as a Sikh Khalsa Panth with this cult is that at the moment it's stretching its arms towards the Guru Rup Khalsa Panth and trying to take it over. And assimilation and destruction of the Panth is its core aim into this idea of Hindu fascism. Because, let's be honest, this is a cult leader, which is a uh, cult leader who has AIDS and is on dying leg. The reason at the current level we are seeing him being portrayed as the savior of Sikhism is because they want to take the independent concept from Sikhism and diminish it completely and convert us all the entire Panth, the entire Sikh uh, nation into just this cult followers. Uh, and they want to bring him in as a cult figure. And uh, bring him in as a cult figure to replace the current structure of Sikh faith and introduce this new draconian Hindutva faction of theirs and turn them into a mere subsidiary of Hinduism. As far as the religious ideology of this cult is concerned, they have none. They never claim to have none. That is one of the very important things which must be understood about this cult or in cults in general in uh, the Indian Union. Because within the union, all the cults are state-backed, state-run, and majority of the uh, big six cults in Punjab share followers. By that I mean, similar groupings of people uh, are going to similar sort of events held by all of these cults to give an impression that uh, they have a larger following than they do have but the problem is the state mechanism keeps on propping them up again and again without the state backing without the state mechanism being behind them these cults are unsustainable they will collapse within a week without the backing of the state without their tax loopholes without them money laundering for all the crooks in the that land and thereby the extension into western world it is mainly a money laundering pedophilic child brothel cult that's what these cults are they have no ideology they believe in nothing they no, don't stand for anything well that's what they are saying now they are saying we never stood for anything. We are merely X, Y, and Z. He always believed in this, this. But they believed in nothing. It was a money laundering operation from the day it started for the Majitia clan. They have invested more and more finance into it and made it into a mega money laundering global scam. That's what this cult is. They bring money in, sell drugs and launder their money. This is Radha Swami cult, Radha Swami Dera. This is your so-called science of spirituality. It should be more like science of money laundering, pedophilia and HIV. That's the reality of this cult. And we will do more talks on this cult and go into details as to what this cult really is and we would like 
our listeners to suggest uh, what kind of details or questions they would like us to answer in our next coming videos about this cult and many like it within the Indian Union. Wahe Guruji ka khalsa. Wahe Guruji ki fateh.